and continue on uh, section 20.8 properties of Laplace transforms. So now we we'll continue on two properties. So one is uh, changing the scale of the transform. So we can look at the first one. So if you have Laplace transform, originally you have f as a function of t, but if you multiply the coefficient in front of t, so it becomes f as a function of a times t. So then you can substitute that into the um, definition. So f integrate t from zero to infinity e to minus st and f a t and d t. But then uh, you can add change, do a change of variable, basically adding uh, uh, a and t, but then you divide it by a, so f a t, t a t, and divided by a. So the integration of d a t is still the same as the the past transform, except that s need to change to s divided by a. So this is one of a divided by the Laplace transform of, uh, I should actually write it like, this is little f. This is little f, it's the original Laplace transform, but now it's f as a function of s divided by a. Okay, so that's, uh, That's the first property. This is trendy by 156. Okay, so the second one is a substitution. What it means is that uh, the Laplace transform now instead of a, a function of S, you basically do a translation, this S minus a certain constant. I mean, this constant can be positive or negative, so you use minus or you can use plus also. But anyway, you can just uh, again by the definition now is integrating t from zero to infinity, the exponential minus s minus a times t and the function f capital f d f t d t. Okay, so uh, you can pull the exponential a t out, then multiply by f t d t. So this is a group together. So it, this means that uh, the function e times e exponential a t times f t um, doing a the past transform, you give it f evaluate s minus a. So you write the uh, formula is a uh, past transform of exponential a times t f t. Okay, so that is uh, the, the second property. And this sometimes is quite useful because I need, allowed you to uh, use the original free transform of Laplace transform and multiple and then get the, the Laplace transform of that function multiplied by exponential function. So that kind of uh, sometimes is uh, convenient. So as a simple example, if you have a Laplace transform of exponential a t times the sine k t, okay? And we know that uh, we did sine, the Laplace transform of sine before. The result is k divided by s squared plus k squared. So, and now the recipe is that, that uh, whenever you see s change to s minus a, so now it's k divided by s minus a squared plus k squared. 
Okay, so that is uh, that is uh, let's write down uh, twenty point one fifty. And then again, similarly for cosine. Which okay, cosine is s divided by s minus a s squared plus k squared. Now it becomes s minus a s minus a square plus k square. So this is uh, twenty point one fifty nine. Okay, so. Uh, uh, that uh, a simple example to illustrate this uh, property. So now the next example, 20.8.5, is now the, uh, again, the second order ODE, similar to the simple harmonic oscillator problem, but add, uh, adding a damping term. So the equation is you have uh, m x double dot the m times acceleration m double pi x double m times x double pi and then plus a damping term which is b times x pi of t then plus k times x equals to zero and subject to the Initial condition x zero is x sub zero, x prime zero equals to zero. Okay, so this is uh, similar to the simple harmonic oscillator. If we set b, b equals zero, this is the simple harmonic oscillator problem we considered before. But now uh, we um, b non-zero, you have a damn situation. So uh, you can use Laplace transform to solve it. So when you do a Laplace transform, so we have uh, the first one will give you m times s squared. The Laplace transform of capital X is again using little x to represent that. Okay, and then uh, you have minus uh, S times X zero. S times X zero, which is a cap, cap the X of zero, and then minus uh, minus X point zero. Okay, but X point zero is uh, X point zero is a uh, is is zero via the choice. Okay, so this is uh, the um, uh, the first term. Okay, the second term is uh, plus b times s x. And minus expands here, which is zero, so you, you don't need that. Oh, not x zero, sorry. This is expand, so. All right. Minus x zero. And then plus k times x little x equals to zero. Okay, so now this is a, this is a um, second order uh, equation. So we can now solve for the, solve for the, um, X, so let's uh, group all the terms together. So you have M S square. 
And the second order in S potentism is, is still linear in X. So M S square plus B S plus K times X with X now equals to, so move this um, initial condition to the other side, M S plus B times x0 okay so um, this implied x is simply m s plus b x0 divided by uh, m s square plus b s plus k Okay, so, so that is uh, the the post transform of the displacement x. Now uh, you can do the inverse Fourier transform to calculate the solution. And to do that, uh, we try to use the, the property here because this is uh, this is a square term involved as this is this uh, linear term in S, which uh, we can uh, we can combine or we can factor that in the perfect square and try, try to see if we can compare this form with these two forms. So let's do it. So x equals to if we divide it by m, so it will be S plus B over M times X zero divided by S square plus B over M times S plus K over M. Okay. And then we we'll try to make that as a perfect square. And so we have the perfect square will be S plus, uh, because we have, we want to have the cost term equals the B times S divided by M. So we, we need B over 2M here to get the cost term and the square. And so, so we add the, at the time b square of a 4m square, so we need to subtract that. So, go k over m minus b square over 4m square. Okay, so uh, this b square of a 4m square is, in, uh, is defined as omega 1 square. So this thing, you can define omega 1 square as uh, k over m minus b square over 4m square. Of course, they assume this is positive, right? Otherwise, it's not a, a square of square. This would be an um, imaginary number. That, so that is another situation. But assuming this is assuming this is greater than zero, then uh, then this two, this form will be similar to this one and that one. So the S one uh, will be similar to, to this one. So you have S minus A. Now the minus A is B over 2M. Of course, uh, this is not exactly of this form yet. So uh, we, need to, we need to change it a little bit. So, so the first term will be S plus B over 2M. So that would be this one. And then plus B over 2M times X0. Then S plus B over 2M square omega one square okay so 
Now the f this the first term s plus b over two m is uh, comparable to this one, and the second term is uh, is comparable to this one except that uh, you have this uh, k here, so you need to multiply by omega one and divide by omega one. Okay, so this means that uh, after x is uh, this first one is uh, everyone everything depend proportional to x zero. Okay, the first term is uh, give you a cosine times exponential a times t, and a is this b over two minus b over two m. So you have exponential function. Actually. I should write that outside because uh, both terms are proportional to the same thing. So exponential function minus b over two m times t. Okay, and the first one is cosine. Now k is omega one, so you have omega one t. Okay, the first one we have b over two m, but we need to multiply by k divided by k, so b plus b over two m omega one. Now you can write as sine omega one t. Okay, so. And uh, so that is uh, the that is the solution twenty point one sixty one. Okay, the first first equation of twenty point one sixty one. Then the next equation is kind of trying to combine this cosine term and sine term in the single cosine function and we have a phase and that is elementary we don't have to do that but if you want to do that you can uh, but uh, this is in this form is also a valid solution also so that is uh, the solution for a dam oxidator so you can see that if you set b equals zero set b this becomes one this becomes zero you get back to a simple harmonic oxidative solution Okay, and the, the text will continue to have a, just a description that uh, this set of equation, dam oxidator equation can be, can appear in another situation, which is uh, the RLC circuit in uh, elementary circuit. So, um, so the equation will be uh, formally the same, the order coefficient will just change to other parameters, but that uh, the solution will be uh, basically the same. So uh, we will need to uh, consider that you can uh, read that yourself. Okay, so this is uh, an example for this property of this uh, so-called substitution property. And so, um, Next time we'll uh, talk about another property.